today by a story you will have heard on our news and with Michael this morning and uh, we're approaching it from a different angle with a man well he's a great friend of ours on late lunch he's the founder of Mythical Ireland he's such a talented fellow and he's sitting in the hot seat today Anthony Murphy welcome back to the show Welcome Jerry. Thank you for joining Thank me you. today uh, the Leah Fall stone the vandalism on the stone by God whoever did it Anthony did it proper they've put fake on the four sides of the stone spray painted on not the first time it's been attacked no the third time <gasps> in the past decade or so and I hate to give them publicity you know because I think whoever did it thrives on that sort of thing at the same time um can't sit by in silence and not express outrage about it, you know. Um, I got sent a few pictures yesterday evening from somebody who didn't want to be named and um, I put one of those pictures on Mythical Ireland online and um, the feedback was pretty um, unanimous, you know. Um, Yeah, the spray paint, I suppose... One good thing about this is the fact that that probably can be removed, you know, without doing further damage to the stone. Um, What's the history of the stone? Just context. It's fascinating, Jerry. The the stone is, a lot of people will know when they visited Tara, it's a phallic stone. It's an upright stone protruding from uh, Onfora, the royal seat or the coronation seat at the hill of Tara. Now, it's it's a piece of granite. Um, it's not rounded. It's actually got four reasonably straight sides on it. It was... See, there's a dispute or a debate about whether it's the real Leofoil. So the mythological history of Leofoil is that it's the stone of destiny, that it was brought from Ireland actually by the Tuatha de Danann, according to the Book of Invasions, as one of four great objects or talismans that were brought, along with the Sword of Nuadu, the Spear of Lu, and the Dogda's Cauldron. The Leofoil was said to scream under the feet of the rightful king. In other words, if a candidate for the high kingship of Ireland were to stand on the stone, it would scream aloud to declare that he is the right one. Now, if you look at the stone, you'll know that it's difficult. It's not the sort of stone that you would stand on. This is part of the debate. I suspect that feeds into why the word fake was used because of this long running debate as to whether it's the real one or not. Now, according to historical sources from the 19th century, it was said that that stone was moved there to commemorate the croppies who had died in the Battle of Tara during the 1798 rebellion. And in fact, under certain lighting conditions, you can see that there's a cross carved into the stone and the numbers 1798. So that makes a certain degree of sense. There's a debate as to whether it was moved from close to the uh, Do on the Neil, the Mound of the Hostages, which is a Neolithic passage to him, the same age as Newgrange, close by, or whether in fact it was moved from uh, one of the trenches where it was found at on Fora. So that's uh, part of the debate about it. I personally don't think any of that matters. It's a part of a national monument. It's precious one way or the other, Mm. you know. And even if it turns out that it's only a 200-year-old gravestone to commemorate the crappies, so what? That doesn't give anybody the right, you know. Now, there's an interesting religious history to Tara. In the late 19th century, in in 1899, a group styling themselves the British Israelites, uh, and this is quite widely known, they went and dug a portion of the Hill of Tara, uh, the Wrath of the Synods, Ra Nashanad, uh, in the belief that the biblical Ark of the Covenant was buried under there. I kid you not. This is straight out of Dan Brown combined with, um, what's his name, um, Indiana Jones and all that <laughs> stuff. But, it, you know, how is it that a group of uh, British religious zealots came to believe that the Ark of the Covenant was brought to Ireland of all places. Of course, back then Ireland was part of the British Empire, as Mm. it were. Um, So they had no reason to doubt their beliefs, even though we can prove that Tara was sacred long before the British ever set foot in Ireland. Um, So that's part of it. They caused a huge amount of damage. There was uproar at the time. Um, Maud Gunn uh, and... Uh, Arthur Griffith, who was the editor of the 
what what's the name of that paper, the the big nationalist paper at the time, the United Irishman. Yes. Uh, they organised a campaign actually against it, and eventually, see, it was under private ownership at the time. Part of the Hill of Tara was owned by a guy called uh, 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 Villiers. Um, Briscoe, Villiers Briscoe, and he uh, he was said to have been there during the quote unquote excavations. They really were a mess, you know, mm. with uh, a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a shotgun in the other. In other words, you know, if any trespasser dares come up here, now I suspect, and it's only uh, uh, this. I'm 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 speaking theoretically here, but I suspect that whoever did this is going on the theory that it is a quote-unquote fake. It's not the real Leah Foyle. You see, at some point in the past, it is suggested by the British Israelites, among others, that Leah Foyle, the real one, was taken away from Tara and brought to Scotland, where it was for a long time the Stone of Scone. And then later again, it made its way to Westminster Abbey, where it was placed under the coronation chair, that the coronation chair for the British royals. Uh, and it eventually made its way back to Scone. Uh, now, this stone is uh, something more akin to what you would expect to either stand on or step over. Mm. A lot of inauguration sites around Ireland for the kings had uh, stones, inauguration stones. Uh, I'm, I'm not entirely familiar with the history of that, but they're not phallic. They're not upright stones. Mm. They're generally the sort of thing that you could so step across. So do you across. doubt that it's the original stone? I I kind of I'm not I I don't have enough expertise I mm. do doubt it yeah but that's irrelevant to as far as happened. I can say. it's totally irrelevant I absolutely agree with you and I couldn't endorse what you say more it is irrelevant because if it is to do with the crappies it's very historical as well as you said in its own right so who's behind this? That's not a child that did that. No, I or suspect... Just, you know, random vandalism. No, no it's not a random no. act either. Look, in 2012, somebody took an axe to the stone and, and chipped a few pieces off it. In 2014, somebody uh, tipped a can of paint all over it. So somebody... And it may, I don't know, I, I'm not, uh, uh, the guards are investigating, thankfully. I believe they had a forensic team up there, which is mm. great. They're taking it very seriously. Uh, it may uh, be that it's either one individual has done all of this or it's a, in, a group of individuals who all have the same ideology. I suspect that the person who did it is religiously is motivated by r- religion. Um, you wouldn't believe the number of people who still believe all that nonsense about Jeremiah, the uh, 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 Old Testament prophet, coming to Ireland and being buried at Cairn Tea at Loch Crew. You wouldn't believe the number of people I've met who actually take all that rubbish seriously. I mean, it's worse than... Cons- it's like flat earth stuff. It's worse than conspiracy theory stuff, you know. Now, the problem is where a person takes it upon themselves to protest about, you know, because part of the religious aspect is that the stone being phallic, Michael uh, Slavin in the Book of Tara refers to it as, or says that it was known locally as the penis stone. And of course, the religious viewpoint about that is that it's a pagan symbol, you know, representing all that is wrong and bad and all that stuff about, you know, yeah. sex and all that stuff. Um, and I, so I, I would suspect the fact that they're calling it a fake maybe that they have a religious motivation, you know. The other question, of course, which you would probably naturally lead on to, is what can we do about it? It's just my next one here on the notes. And do you close Tara? No. And no, there is a plan. There is a, a management plan for the Hill of Tara, which has been drawn up over the last number of years, which was revealed last year, which stresses that Tara suffers and has been for a number of years from its popularity as a destination, not just for bus tours, but for locals walking and even for GAA teams training, you know, and stud, stud, stud marks damaging the monuments. Now, they are uh, National Monument Service, OPW, Mead County Council and other stakeholders. They are in the process of developing a plan for Tara. What we don't want to see, Jerry, in no way at all, is any closure or any... But you are sort of faced with the question, what else are we supposed to do? Tara is a publicly accessible hill uh, covered in monuments uh, that is vis- you, you can visit it 24-7-365 any time of the day or night any day of the year the gate is never locked 
And I would hate to see that changing because of one or two small minded, yes. sick minded individuals, actually. Mm. People who are obviously not right in the head and need some sort of help. Um, do we fence it off? I don't know. They will undoubtedly factor that in to their plan as they move forward with it. It's taken years to, you know, for the plan to be published. And there's a difference between publishing a plan and actually, you know, implementing it. Mm. Um, but wouldn't it be sad that the actions of one or two, you know, would ultimately lead and push in the direction thinking to say, well, we got to secure some or part of it or make some of it off limits or whatever. You're categorically saying today you don't want to see that. Happen. I don't. And we've seen that actually at a number of places mm. over the past few years. There's been vandalism at a lot of Irish, mm. uh, not just Irish sacred sites, but actually prehistoric sites, a lot of Neolithic sites. And they're the most precious because they're the oldest. So we've seen, for instance, Cairn Tea is locked now. It's uh, inaccessible to the public. Um, we saw damage to a cairn in, uh, uh, in Ballygawley in Sligo during the lockdowns where some Somebody actually dug a hole into the cairn. Uh, 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 the, 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 the natural way of keeping people away is to lock them out. But I think you can only carry that policy so far before you, 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 you cause enragement among the general public who feel rightly so that they should, because they always have done, that they should continue to have access to these places. But that access comes at a cost which is, you know, you have to vow on behalf of the people of the country and not just the country but in relation to say Bruna Bonia which which is a World Heritage Site. We're minding that for the whole world mm. and I like to think we're doing the same for Tara, mm. you know. Um, you can't lock people out um, there is a quest uh, or, uh, a suggestion uh, for CCTV I mean, that's difficult as well. I mean, CCTV doesn't usually yield very good results in darkness, for instance. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, so what do you put cameras everywhere? Cameras on the hills of Loch Crew and at the Hill of Tara. Is that what we're talking places about? Places like Fornox you know, and yeah. the Hill of Slain and yeah. Mellifont and Monaster Boyce and all these places that are so precious. Is there any getting through to those misguided people, you know, that have, you know, a different thought process in relation to this. You know, you generally, when you get people who take up a point of view, this is the sad part of the world today. There's no talking to them, on, you know, and it's in more The than difficulty, of course, is we don't know who did it. Yeah, that's We it. can't sit that's them it. down in a room yeah. and say, what the hell were you thinking? Because that's what 99% of people who've seen those pictures today are, are saying and thinking. What the hell were you at? You are not acting on, on our behalf. This is disgraceful carry on. You know, you should be ashamed of yourself. But of course, it may well be that there's a person off there looking at all these headlines going, ha ha ha, you know, lapping it up. I don't know, because you don't know the psychological state of the person involved. All we know is that um, they have caused damage. It's vandalism. Mm. It is punishable under law. Can they be found and tracked down and traced? It happened sometime. It's interesting because I've been speaking to people who are at Tara on Monday and uh, one person who, who was at Tara till about five or six in the evening and said everything was fine. Now, there were a lot of people around over the bank holiday. Remember, it was a bank yes, holiday, yes. Uh, the new Bridget's Day bank holiday. Mm. Um, and uh, it may have been that the person went up there under the cover of darkness at two o'clock in the morning. And that, look, that's the sort of stuff that you, it's really very, very, very difficult. They to had police. to have a bit of light because the way it's done on the stone, just look at it. You know, it wasn't done with, without good. You know, there was something illuminated that stone to to put fake on it yeah. very carefully on each side. It's done well, whoever did it. You know what I mean? It's not just a, a rush job of that. But look, I suppose it's an opportunity to say today, if you're around that area on Bank Holiday Monday, coming towards sunset or after, if you noticed anything, or in the early hours of the following morning, the Guardi are interested in yeah, hearing from you. Yeah, absolutely. Would yeah. encourage anybody who saw mm. anything suspicious. I mean, at the end of the day, somebody went up there with with a spray can or a number of spray cans may actually have a spray paint on their clothing or on yes. their skin. Yeah. If you know this person, report them, you know. It's blue in colour. Anthony, I have to leave it there for today. Thank you so much uh, for, for dropping into us. You're a mine of information, I have to say, and we'll have to pick up this story again. More about, we can do a whole series on the Hill of Tara. Anthony Murphy from Mythical Ireland. Thanks Thank for you. having me, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. 